Congresswoman Kat Kamek and the Washington Examiner's Byron York. Congressman, Congresswoman, it's good to have you on, and Byron York, too. It's good to see you both. Congresswoman, your home state of Florida, it's now official. Hurricane Ian, the deadliest storm in Florida's history since 1935. What does Florida need right now? Uh, well, it is an all hands on deck movement right now, Liz. I mean, we're still doing search and rescue operations. Over 1,000 people have been rescued. We are trying to rebuild an entire grid. Uh, it's not just power lines and poles. It's an entire grid that we have to get uh, back up and operational. It's the basic essentials of water, food and shelter. So now the big lift after those basic necessities are met are the housing mission. We have thousands of people who lost everything and they have nowhere to go. So that FEMA housing mission is gonna be critical as we start the process for rebuilding and disaster <clears throat> recovery. To the Congresswoman's point, Byron, this is all happening right ahead of the midterms. You know, how serious is that? And how, we've got also this KPMG survey. More than nine out of 10 CEOs forecast a deeper recession than expected by next year. Two thirds say it's not going to be mild and short. Byron, we started out the third quarter. The market was it's wobbly now, but it started off great. It rose 14 percent, the S&P, by mid-August and then a 17 percent swan dive. A lot of uh, indicators are saying this is a rough road ahead. Absolutely. I mean, it had a good day today, but it's still on a, a bear market. And I, I don't think anybody could listen to the chairman of the Fed, uh, Jerome Powell, when the Fed raised uh, interest rates another three quarter points. And he talked about the so-called soft landing. And you really didn't have to read between the lines to hear him say there's not going to be a soft landing. Uh, there will be a recession. One word about uh, Florida. Uh, this is the time that a governor's ability is tested uh, if he does well, uh, he can uh, reap enormous political benefits by doing a good job. And this is a critical period uh, for Ron DeSantis. He comes out of this well, helping people, showing real organizational skills, taking care of this problem. That's an enormous boost for his argument to be president of the United States. Congresswoman, to Byron's uh, point, I mean, Hurricane Katrina made George W. Bush's future. Hurricane Andrew, George H.W. I mean, we've got what the Washington Post is now reporting even lobbyists in D.C. now prepare for the GOP to win the House in the midterms. And then DeSantis is likely to run in 2024. Well, you know, I can't speak to Governor DeSantis's future plans because all I know is right now he is 100 percent focused on Florida and disaster recovery. He and his wife, Casey, they have been in every single place that has been affected from St. Augustine to Daytona Beach to Fort Myers to Naples and everywhere in between. They are 100 percent on getting people the assistance they okay. need. They're not asking, are you Republican or Democrat? They are asking, do you need help? And we will get it for you. The so, Democrats, yeah, they're I can't stepping say up. the same. Yeah, we, so the, yeah. there's also this, Byron, Speaker Pelosi really got checkmated hard last night. Watch this by a late night host. Watch. Our planet was on the ballot. Everything was on the ballot in this election, more than in regular majorities come and go. The polls still aren't reflecting necessarily what you're saying. No. Do, you, do you believe in the polls? No, let me just say, I said was on the ballot passed when people decided to run. I wouldn't want to be in President Biden's shoes. I, I mean, he, he's got to convince the American people that the economy is slowing, that prices are rising, that electricity bills are going through the roof, and that 401ks are crashing because his policies are so good. And the American people aren't believing that. What do you say, Byron? I mean, Democrats can't afford to lose a single seat in the Senate. Anywhere from five to seven states may be up for grabs. What do you think, Byron? Well, when you get reality checked by Stephen Colbert, it's kind of kind of bad. I think uh, I think the fact is everything points right now toward a Republican takeover of the House. All of the factors uh, point toward a Republican takeover of the House. Yes, the Senate is is impossible to predict. Uh, but there certainly is a scenario for a Republican uh, takeover. There's a scenario for, for Democrats to keep it. And there's also a scenario that it stays 50-50 the way it is now with the vice president's vote being the decisive one. But right. as far as the House is concerned, all of the issues point toward a Republican takeover. And so to what Byron is saying, Congresswoman, we're tracking what voters are saying on the ground. They're upset. 
Let's watch another unusual claim from the president and watch what Democrat minority and Hispanic voters are now saying. Watch this. We have the eighth largest black population in the country, and between all minorities, we have 20 percent of our state is minority. And so I, uh, I uh, was sort of raised uh, in the Puerto Rican community at home. And I've never been so disappointed in my party. He said he would work with the other side, and that's for that gentleman saying that Joe Biden's on top of things. Are you kidding? The White House has to clear up every day. Anytime he talks to the media, I mean, he just said a dead woman was alive and tried to talk to her. I mean, let's be serious. He's not on top of anything. I feel like the Democratic National Party looks at my demographics and assumes that I'm going to vote for them. I'm a Latina woman. You were a Democrat and you are now a Republican. Why? Because uh, the fact that the Democratic Party has changed a lot and I identif identify more with the uh, Republican Party. What things? Well, we're for God, country, family, and hard work. What do you say, Congresswoman? <laughs> My goodness, they need to hire Mr. Clean to get in there and take over that press office because whether it's Biden or Harris, they're in constant cleanup mode. And it's true, uh, to Byron's point, they're in an alternate reality. And this is why Republicans are taking over. It's because we have an America first agenda. We have a plan going in to 2023. The Democrats, they'll throw every progressive agenda item at the wall and hope that something sticks. That's their plan. But the great thing about the Republican platform is that it benefits everybody. It doesn't matter what box you check. It's about rising everyone up and lifting them up. That is why it's so attractive, and that's why people are fleeing the Democratic Party, because Republicans, we've got their backs. And but we they're have also becoming independent, too. Final word, Byron. The, the Independent Party is growing. Yes, every, every soundbite you just played uh, pointed to a major problem for Joe Biden. And, and a lot of the polls we have seen that poll Democrats only have found that large majority, sometimes two-thirds of the party, want someone else to be the Democratic nominee in 2024. A lot of them say that's because they believe Joe Biden is too old, a problem that will not get better. Uh, and he's facing a very, very okay. difficult situation. Congresswoman Kamek and Byron York, thank you so much for joining us.